Attention Northwest Arkansas businesses and talent seekers. Introducing Onboard NWA.com, your hyperlocal job board crafted for our unique community. Struggling to find the perfect match for your job openings? Onboard NWA simplifies the hiring process, connecting you with the region's top talent through tailored talent matching solutions. Whether you're an employer seeking expertise or a professional looking for your next opportunity, Onboard NWA is here for you. Discover more at onboardnwa.com and let's build the future of Northwest Arkansas together. Hey, this is Gary Head at Signature Bank of Arkansas. We founded Signature Bank in 2005 with local ownership to serve our communities with the best bankers with the most authority to do business. We have succeeded in growing our bank to over $800 million in assets, including $50 million in growth in the first quarter in 21. We have 155 teammates that love our communities and the customers that we serve. We are always here to serve and eager to do so. As chairman and CEO, I welcome your call to have the opportunity to serve you. Please call 479-684-4700 or online at signature.bank and tell them that you heard about us at I Am Northwest Arkansas. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited to be with you today. I'm here with Edwin Ortiz, the founder of Rejoicy. And Rejoicy is a startup here in Northwest Arkansas that I heard about through some other friends that live here locally. And I said, wow, what is Rejoicy all about? And I'm going to actually let him tell the story of Rejoicy and tell the story, tell his own story. But without further ado, I want to welcome Edwin Ortiz to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. How are you doing? Doing great, Randy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm excited. Oh, man. No, it's great to have you here. And like I said, I I really appreciate, you know, your willingness to come on the podcast and share a little bit about your journey. You know, one of the things that we always talk about is that the, the podcast is always focused on the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life here in the Ozarks. And I'm sure you could talk about all of those, but why don't you just kind of give the audience an initial introduction into who Edwin Ortiz is, and then we'll kind of go from there and talk about this baby that you birthed called Rejoicy and what it's like. I mean, you have two babies at home, two beautiful daughters, but you also have another baby called Rejoicy, and I want to talk about that as well. So why don't you uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself? For sure. So yeah, my name is Edwin Ortiz. I was born in Mexico City. Grew up there, moved to to the U.S. when I was around 15, and I've been around startups my my whole life. And graduated from Brigham Young University in Idaho, started business, more specifically supply chain, and then worked for for a few years for a couple of Fortune 500 companies doing technology, supply chain, and and retail uh, in eight different countries, and then. Started my my first startup called Luncher, and it was this platform that made it easy for people to order lunch from their office and get it delivered for free. And it worked really well. We grew up to eighty offices up until March of twenty twenty, and then all eighty offices closed. <laughs> so at wow. that point, yeah, yeah, it was it was interesting. And at that point, we we decided to keep serving our customers. Keep looking for ways to to partner with the businesses that needed it here locally. And as we tried different iterations of of what the product should be, we came up with with Rejoicy, which is what we're working on fully now. And it's it's this 
it's truly the easiest way to to set up an e-commerce website and for the community to shop local online. So you can think of it as as this a farmer's market that never closes. Is you know you can just you know setting up your website is as easy as setting up your table at a farmer's market, and then people from the community can come and shop now from thirty nine local businesses in one place in one cart, and they can either get it delivered, pick up, or get it shipped. So that's that's what we've been working on for good seven eight months, and yeah, we're we're super excited to to talk more about what that is. No, oh, that's awesome. Well, so listen, I do want to back up just before we jump into that, because I think, you know, a lot of times when people think you start a business that, you know, it's everything's going to work out perfectly. And I would love for you just to kind of talk about the mindset that is required to make the pivot that you did when life happened back in March of 2020, right? Because I was the mm-hmm. same way. I was on the road. I was traveling. I was going all over, talking to people doing trainings and all kinds of things, doing a lot of podcasting, going to see clients do podcasts. And then March, it stopped. I took my last flight to Boston. I came back. They shut Boston down the same day that I left it on the 12th of March. And I didn't travel again for like 15 months. So it's like I had to totally pivot and do things differently. But I'd love for you just to unpack that because I know there's some people listening to this podcast that, you know, they either are in a business or want to start a business or maybe have kind of run a business and it's run its course, if you will, and you realize that, okay, I maybe have to do something different. I'd love for you just to kind of talk about the pivot. Now, your your pivot was a little different than others because it was induced by a pandemic, but go, you you share yeah. uh, a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, I think the, what's really interesting is as entrepreneurs and you know business owners, we have one job and that job is to solve a problem. We need to solve a problem for someone, right? And And I think the pivot for us was when the problem stopped being a problem, right? For us, it was uh, when we were doing lunch here, we saw lunch as something that took too long. You had to go drive through traffic and you had all this, you know, all these problems associated with it. When people were working from home, they didn't have that problem. All these offices were closed, so they no longer needed to, you know, work from the office. So we, we saw that problem disappear, but there was all these problems that came up because of, of the pandemic. But there's, you know, in general, there's always problems that are unsolved. So as we looked around, we saw all these different things that if we were able to solve them, it would make, you know, local businesses more successful. It would make it easier for people to, to actually support local businesses because we see it as, okay, people want to support local businesses, but sometimes it's hard to do it. So how do we solve for that? Uh, and I think the... What we've learned is that businesses don't fail because you fall. They fail because you quit. And we would said not to quit. And as a team, I mean, it, you probably lived through this. We, we had to pause and think about, okay, do we go and get a day job? Do we, you know, do we just high five and say, okay, we, we tried? Or do we keep going and, and try to solve you know, a different problem? And as we looked around, there was even more problems now. So we decided that we had the team to do it. And, and we kept at it. And, Things never work the way you plan them. So I think the the best way to do it is have have a vision but be flexible in the day to day because it will it will always change. Yeah, I love you're right. You're absolutely right about that. Have a vision and be flexible with the day to day because you just never know what it what presents, what other opportunities will present themselves. Were you the one that saw the writing on the wall with regard to the pivot to rejoicey, or was there another team? member that you were working with and and how how is your team organized that you're currently working with yeah so we have an amazing team we have uh, my co-founder luke brown he is our cto so he he's responsible for all the all technology portion of it we have our design director bryce holland and, and he's responsible for how everything looks from the website to physical you know visual things and then we have a marketing manager and then we have a video manager that do you know he does a lot of the the videos that we have gifs and pictures and and things like that so that's our team and the interesting thing is when everything closed we were pretty close to running out of money at that point because you know the company was growing really fast and then all of a sudden all the money stops so we had that conversation with the team and it was you know the tough conversation of hey look we we're about to run out of money and we have a couple of weeks we need to figure out what's going to happen. And everyone decided to stay. 
I mean, it's it's incredible. Um, it's incredible that they they were willing to stay and they were willing to weather the storm together. And because of that, I think we've we've become a stronger team and we know how to work well together. We've been we've been able to to be flexible. And I don't think it was one thing that led us to to do the pivot. I think it was trying to solve small problems. I was like, okay, people are trying to get food in their homes, but they're also trying to feed their family because now they're there with you know their wife and kids or husband, you know, whatever it might be. So we designed some features for that. And then, you know, as, as we changed some things, it became this new product, you know, it's Rejoicey, uh, which is a whole new different thing now. But yeah, I think it was small yeah, iterations I, and it was, it was kind of a team effort for sure. Yeah. Well, and it sounds like everybody was kind of all in with you, right? They were just like, listen, we're going to go, we're going to go one way or the other. We're going to see how this thing fares out. So. I yeah. think it, it's good to surround yourself around people. That That's a key thing. You got to be around, if you're going to start a business, you certainly, it's hard to go it alone, I think. So solopreneurs do have a hard go of it. I mean, of course, they are a, a team of one and there's some benefits to that, but there are also some, you know, there's some challenges. And I think a lot of times when in this environment, you're kind of able to feed off of each other as you're going through this journey and that energy that you can get off of each other allows you guys to move the ship forward, so to speak. So tell me a little bit about how have you seen Rejoicey in the current marketplace here in Northwest Arkansas? And I'm obviously quite familiar with, you know, standing up a, a website or a simple store to try something out. But, you know, for a lot of people that maybe, you know, don't fully grasp the understanding of Rejoicey, Kind of, kind of give us an example of a, of a case of a company that has been able to use your software online and ca- basically stand up something and sell something that they're either creating or or just have access to. Yeah, so I think a, a good example of that is there's a a food truck called Rolling Taco on Eighth Street, close to to the Walmart home office, and they didn't have a website, and when we came and proposed to them, hey, you know, we can help you make a website. You just have to go to this side on your computer and, um, you know, answer some questions and it'll create it for you. They said, you know, that's great, but we don't even have a computer. Like we have the tablet that we charge with, we have our phones, but so we we made it to where they could create a, a website through text. So now you can create a, a website through text on Rejoicey. And that was that was step one on, you know, on how how that happened. And then because they were able to to create their site, now they started getting a lot more orders online from people on on Rejoicey and then people would just come and pick them up so they would skip the line. Yeah. So that was I love that. That was one but th- yeah, so and then the next one that we saw was a candle shop called The Little Candle of Northwest Arkansas. Mm-hmm. They they were selling at at different farmers markets, farmers markets closed. So now they had this product they couldn't they couldn't sell. So we we worked with them to create a storefront. They created their shop, and then they started offering the Two Eleven Cafe. So inside the Bentonville Library as a pickup. Mm-hmm. So we offered you know pickup locations. So people would come to their site, buy a candle, and they could go and pick it up inside the library. Well, what that did is every time someone would buy a candle, they would also buy coffee. So now it was creating this this interactions between shops and this mutual benefit. And I mean, now we have some of the bread shops that are offering that as a pickup. We have jewelry, all kinds of things. And it generates more traffic for, for the library and 211 Cafe. But then it also gave physical outlet for businesses that didn't have a physical outlet before. So those are yeah. some of the things that are happening and that are really, really cool within, you know, within the community. Yeah. And, you know, and I looked at the site and I see how you guys have it set up with the rolling taco here. And it's really cool. So you're you're basically saying that the rolling taco folks created all this via text. Yes. Wow. And then I guess I guess you prompt them for the images and everything and they have all this up here. This is the one thing that and and people can go to rejoicey.com and actually view all the shops on Rejoicey. So there's a mm-hmm. there's a long list of shops that are available for people to check out. And that is R-E-J-O-I-C-Y.com. R-E-J-O-I-C-Y.com. 
and you can check out all the shops that are on here. But you know, it's funny because this really is a need that that companies have. I can't tell you the number of local food trucks here in Northwest Arkansas that all they have is a Facebook page. And that's fine. But what I tell people all the time is that when you have a Facebook page, you're basically a digital sh- a digital sharecropper on somebody else's platform. And you've got to be able to set yourself up on your own platform and even be able to, so that people can come to you there. And then the next step is, I'd be curious to know, are you allowing people that are on your platform to then maybe set up an email list or how does that work? Is that possible? Yeah. So what we do is the shops on, on Rejoice, you get their own link. So they don't, uh, their customers don't have to come to the marketplace. They can come directly to them. And right. then we also give them their customer data. So they own their customer data. It's like they have, they have their own side, which they control. They can control communication yeah. with the customer, but they don't have to go and build it on their own. So we wanted the best of both worlds of having the, the flexibility that you have of owning your own your own website while not having to mm-hmm. deal with domains and you know the paying a developer or you know spending a bunch of hours trying to build it on your own. Yeah. yeah. So basically they have they have either option. They can just keep it right where where they have it with you or they can actually get their own domain and then point it directly to the site that you create for them. Yeah, I mean, and, and what they have today is is like rejuicy.com slash rolling taco. But now what we learned is a lot of the the businesses don't mind that it's not their, you know, it's not rolling taco.com or whatever. Right, it's uh, right. because they take that and they put it on Instagram, on Facebook, and now it serves as the link back to their own page. So yeah. the want for actually, their, you know, uh, a separate domain versus their, their name wasn't as big as we want to be able to send them directly. So today that's mm-hmm. that's the the solution that we have is uh, yeah you can send them directly to your site or people can come through rejoicy.com and see see all the businesses on there and, and discover new shops. So you'll yeah, see you get, you I get love that. I, I think that's great, and I think people listening to this need need to understand that it's it's not as difficult as they think, right, Edwin? To to get something started, you just have to get it started, right? And I, I think of as I hear you talk about your story and the pride that you have and the work that you guys have put in and you know, I, I kind of think back to the folks that started Shopify and, you know, they started, you know, a lot of people don't realize this. These, the, the guy that started Shopify, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was a, um, a snowboarder and yeah. he wanted to, he wanted to sell uh, snowboards and some other stuff that he had come up, some really cool designs and stuff. And he wanted a simple way to do that. And now they are a multi-billion dollar company and uh, their stock value is through the roof. I, I wish I had bought some Shopify stock back in the day. It's it's expensive now. I mean, it's over a thousand dollars a share, but it is definitely. I mean, they have kind of perfected that. But what you guys have done here in this local market has created something along those same lines. And there's a huge opening in that space for people now that we. A lot of people are working from home. I just was on the trail on the Greenway, and I ran into a neighbor, and she basically told me that her group at Walmart is 100% going to be remote. So everybody's working from home. Yep. And uh, just that one group, and not all of Walmart, I'm just, but I want to be clear that that is going to be one of the differences that we see moving forward is how people work, where people work, how people set up businesses, where people set up businesses. So Rejoicey is kind of perfectly positioned to take advantage and to create that viral marketplace that kind of needs to be created for people to sell their wares. Yeah. I mean, and the way we see ourselves is, I mean, we, we think Shopify is great and I think there's, there's definitely a, a space for that, but we see ourselves as an in-between a Shopify and like a Facebook marketplace is you want, you know, we want to be really easy to set up, really be the next step where people can have their own page and sell online, but they don't want to go and spend, you know, all this time and money on, on creating a, a Shopify website. So, and I think by positioning ourselves as, as that, as the, the in-between, and then being really hyper-local by creating pickup locations, offering, you know, you can offer delivery, you can offer shipping. It gives like this, like this omni-channel option for, for a business to, to get started. And, you know, it takes you 10 minutes and now you have the same capabilities as, as a Walmart in, in terms of, of what you can do yeah. and how you can yeah. sell online, which is, you know, it's huge. And just so for the uninitiated that are listening to this podcast, just 
give me your definition of omni-channel so that people understand what you're talking about. Because are you here, uh, like since I've been here, and I knew what omni-channel was before I moved to Northwest Arkansas, but since I've been here, omni-channel is used all the time to describe a lot of things. But give us your quick definition of omni-channel so people have an understanding of that. Yeah, I think the, the simple definition is making it easy and available for people to shop your goods anywhere in any way they want, right? So if, if they want to physically go to a store, they can do that. If they want to go and see what's available there and they and then order it for shipping, they can do that. If they want to order online, but then pick up in store, they can do that. So it's really making it easy for, for people to buy your product from anywhere and interact in, in different forms. Because of the, I think the extra option of, of the pickup and some of the events that we're going to start doing, starting with the one uh, this Wednesday, it gives people the ability to showcase their product, showcase who they are physically, but then also give all this op- other options to for people to shop their product. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And that, and that definitely makes sense. I, so two things. One, I know that this podcast won't be out by the time this event happens. So do you think this will be the first of many events like this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is What's the, the event called? What's it called? So, uh, this one is uh, for makers. So uh, I think it's, yeah. I don't see what call it. Like, meet your makers <laughs> and the idea is like you're <laughs> going and you're meeting makers from the uh, from the community and uh, interacting with them we have some amazing talent in, in this area and yeah. once you actually see the stuff that they do and you get to appreciate the things that are are available and also right. the reason why uh, sometimes local tends to be a little more expensive is there there is some really high quality stuff happening so it's it's really cool yeah. Do, now, do, I'm just curious. Do you know Joel Gordon? Uh, maybe. Tell okay. Me. He yeah. is. He was yeah. the official tinkerer at the Amazium, and he is a maker. He actually yes. worked. Yes. He, he is a really I good know. guy, and he knows a lot of people. As a matter of fact, I, I got to make sure you guys are fully connected because he, he comes in contact with a lot of creators, people that need what you offer at Rejoicey to be able to, once it's created, have a platform to push it out on and share it. So. So I think that's important. I, I'll, I'll have to make that connection for you. But yeah, I just think, do. you know, yeah. as I as I hear you talk and, and I hear the passion in your voice for around Rejoicey, and then, you know, I think about the conversations I've had with Joel about his goal to make Northwest Arkansas a true, and I'm using air quotes here, a true maker environment. I think the two of you guys would definitely get along really well and you're on the same page. But I, I think it's important to see that you have so many like-minded people like you, Edwin, like Joel and others that are here in Northwest Arkansas that are really trying to create opportunities for people to you know, be the best version of themselves, especially those that are out there creating amazing things that the world needs to see. Yeah, something I'll, you reminded me of that I think it's, it's key to, to what we're doing and what we believe in, in that it's special here in Northwest Arkansas is the fact that the more we collaborate with like-minded people, the better things are so the the idea of okay we're competing is it should you know it's not something that that actually benefits the community so being able to we've seen it with shops as shops collaborate they've all been selling more on the marketplace yeah you know and and as you know as we people in the community that are advocating for for makers and for local businesses get together i think we can make a much larger impact with it so yeah collaboration is key yeah no i i agree 100 percent now I'm curious. Did you? I know. So you said you did some tech work in the in the past, but are you the one that's doing some of the programming in this, or is, do you have other people that are doing the heavy lifting with the programming piece of it? Yeah. So, so uh, Luke Brown, my co-founder, he's he's the one doing the heavy lifting with with the okay. uh, the development. He he previously worked for uh, JB Hunt, and then he he also worked for uh, Rev Unit. He was a senior okay. senior developer at Rev Unit, so he worked on you know, the Sam's Club app and Chick-fil-A app and, you know, stuff for Walmart. So he, he has a lot of experience on, on just retail technology and distribution and, and things like that. And then on, on my side, I work yeah, in technology, more on the program management and implementation side of things. Sure. So it's, it's just a good, yeah, good way to, for us to work together. We're good, good and, partnership and, there. And that's a great point. I think people listening to this should recognize that you're, you're not going to know how to do everything. Some people are tremendous marketers that need to be mated with people that can actually get the stuff out and execute. Some people are tremendous talents on the technical side, but not so much on the marketing side. So you kind of need to find those individuals, you know, the yin and the yang that kind of weigh things out. And it sounds like you found 
several pieces of the puzzle that have made Rejoicey really special in terms of what you guys are trying to do. 100%. I think it's so much better to have a team, especially when you're trying to make something big. I think that's the key. I think if, you know, if at one point you're thinking about, you know, having your your kids work, you know, in the business and, you know, get them, you know, get them the discount on the phone, you know, company phone line or whatever. Yeah, maybe have have a business, you know, just just with you, you know, and your family. But I think if you're trying to make something big, it makes all the difference to have the right people working with yeah, you, the right team. And absolutely. Then, and then incentivized well, right? So they, they need to have ownership on the company. They need to feel like they you know, their contributions will also impact them in, in the long term. And I think that's that's what we've been trying to do. And and I'm I'm super proud of the team that we, we've been able to to create because of that. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. Well before we close, I, I'd love to just kind of get your take. I mean so you say you've been here in Northwest Arkansas since the age of fifteen. You went to Rogers High School, is that correct? Mm-hmm. That's correct. Okay. So what is your take on Northwest Arkansas, given that you've you've lived in other places, you've been all over the world actually. But what would be your take on Northwest Arkansas for those that are listening to this, that are thinking about moving here? We actually get a lot of email and letters from people that are thinking about moving here and they really like the podcast because it kind of gives them an insider's view of what Northwest Arkansas is all about from the people that are actually living there. So I would love for, for you to just to share really quickly your thoughts on Northwest Arkansas as a whole as it's changed. Because how old are you right now? I'm 32. So, okay, so yeah. you've seen 17 years 17 of years. change between when you came here at 15 and you know the age you are now as a father and a husband and all that stuff. So talk just a little bit about that and what you think about Northwest Arkansas. I mean, this is a fascinating place. I think, I mean, it has changed completely, you know, from when I got here at 15 to now. I remember, you know, the, the drive to Bella Vista being a two, you know, two-way lane and now it's all built out and the things that are available here in Northwest Arkansas now at the size that we are, it's, I think that part is what's, what's really fascinating. I mean, I've been in some really large cities that don't have things that we have in, in Northwest Arkansas. And I think the ability to, as a business owner, the ability to reach talent, like really high talent and network with, with people that have done really interesting things is it's probably greater than any other place I've, I've lived in. Plus, you have the sure. ability to to live in a you know pretty safe area with not as much traffic, where you can you know go and have a meeting and then be home you know and ten minutes later and go you know ride your bike and go running and do all kinds of things in in a pretty pretty small time frame. So it is a special place, a special place, and it's growing so fast. I think the the fact that we are talking about you know startups in in North Arkansas. In Bentonville, which you know it's it's still pretty small, it's going to be interesting to see it in you know ten years when when this is you know a lot larger and and know that we were there when when this was taking off. I think it's yeah, it's really cool. It's exciting. So when you're not conquering the world in Northwest Arkansas with Rejoicey, uh, where do you and your family go to hang out and get a good bite to eat? Oh man, that's so I'm I'm a big fan of of rolling taco. I, okay, I think I'm. I'm partial to that. I think we we definitely enjoy enjoy Mexican food. I love Hugo's in Fayetteville. Great yep, burger. Sure. I think if experience wise, I, I really like Lewis. Uh, they have some some good food, but just being able to to see the planes take off and you know go and kayak right there. And I mean, it's I think in terms of experience, that's it's really cool place. And then being able to go and walk to Osage Park, okay, right next yeah, door. Sure. Yeah, so I think. Yeah, we do a lot of that. Just go and walk the parks and you know spend time with the family in the trails. So sure, uh, sure. anything close to that, it's good. Yeah, the trails and the outdoors here in um, Northwest Arkansas, we have in abundance. Anything you want, you can go hiking, hiking. You can go casual hiking. You can go mountain biking. You can go gravel riding, cycling. You name it, we have it. Would you agree? Yes, yes, one hundred percent. I mean, that's the thing. Like ours is pretty casual, right? We have a four year old and. And that you also, I mean, they they get tired fast, but the, yes, the abundance is, is incredible. I mean, I grew up in Mexico City where if you wanted to go to the park, you needed to drive an hour, you know. And, um, wow. So being able to just, you know, be in any park within a few minutes here in North Arkansas is, is an incredible. It's great. Incredible thing. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. Well, I love that. Well, man, if uh, Edwin, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? 
they can email me at edwin at rejoicy.com mm-hmm. um, I mean, they can reach me out on LinkedIn. Um, okay. Yeah. And we'll put all that in the show notes yeah, too. We'll, so we'll people, put on there. yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, yeah, we're, we're really, I mean, they can, they can go to our website. We have 24 seven, you know, communication there. So you can uh, reach sure. out to us anytime on the site. Yeah, and I would encourage everybody to just go to rejoicey.com. Check it out. Spy it out. See if you see some businesses on there that maybe are, are similar to what you want to start, or maybe it's just a business that you want to support. You know, just t- definitely check it out. You know, I love the, the way it opens up shop local in one place. And uh, you have the option of opening your shop or starting, a sh- I mean, start shopping. So it's cool. And, and there's a bunch of different people that have used them. You got Tyson on here, 211 Cafe, Bites and Bowls, Two Locas, uh, Rolling Taco. So, I mean, there's there's already a proof of concept here, and there's, there's a lot of good things happening. And it's just a well-thought-out, well-put-together website. So, Edwin, I want to congratulate you and the team, Luke, and the rest of the folks for doing such an amazing job. And especially, you know, to see this baby birthed in the pandemic. People will ask all the time, did anything good come out of the pandemic? Well, Edwin, you can raise your hand and say yes. Rejoicey.com came out of the pandemic and we have never looked back and we're keep moving forward. So congratulations, sir. Randy, thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, folks, there you have it. That's another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. To learn more about us or to read or download the show notes from today's episode, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. You can listen to this podcast and sign up for our free newsletter to keep up with us and all things NWA. Sign up today. You can also subscribe to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast wherever you listen to it, and please consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Our podcasts come out every Monday, rain or shine. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and we'll see you back here next week for a new episode of the podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.